younger? Right. You won't need those down here. Love is such a stupid emotion. I hate to see such a pretty girl. Go down there. At least not yet. I'd like to help you. I have an idea. You could be my messenger. Messenger? Yes. We have rules here, too. You see, suicide is a special case. And I'm sure that you'll be looked upon more favorably if you take this job. Do I have a choice? Of course, the choice is entirely yours. You'd have to go back. Up there. No, I won't go back. Do you realize what is down there? Go look. See for yourself. No. <laughs> I thought you'd change your mind. Now, all you have to do is deliver something for me. If you succeed, we'll take your case before a special tribunal. You see, your crime is different. You only sin against yourself. And what am I doing here? I've hurt no one. <laughs> that will be entirely up to the tribunal. Actually, what you'll be doing is delivering to your society up there a passport, a ticket. One way, of course, for them to join our society down here. We try very hard to make it easy for them to join us. <laughs> it's like a big country club. Sometimes our gifts are unusual. As you can see, this is a camera. Looks like an ordinary camera. <laughs> That's where you're wrong, my dear. You will find that nothing is ordinary from down here. You'll deliver this to Mr. Donald Powell. What has he done to make him a candidate for this place? <laughs> it isn't what he has done, my dear. It's what he's about to do. How do I find this, Mr. Powell? Well, there's the address. We'll furnish the transportation. You deliver the gift. <laughs> Good girl. This is the 28th photo you took. Oh? I didn't count. Besides, you're being paid by the hour. This isn't included in the fee. Don't be coy with me. You have a wife. Not since last week. Besides, why should a guy get cooped up just because he paid two bucks for a marriage license? Did it hurt? I should have warned you about lover boy. I'm being paid to work. I'm not going to work anymore today. It's up to you, Don, to work or not. But I'm getting paid. Aren't I, Charlie? Sure. Now get out of here. Coming? Come on, get out. OK, OK. What's the rush? Don, you need a rest. You're overworked. I feel fine, Charlie. Why don't you go away for a few days? But don't take a girl with you. Everybody running my life? Well, you need somebody to run your life. Charlie, you make enough money off of me. 
And what do you want me to do? Go up to Maine, to New England. But only with your camera. Take photographs. Rest. Change the surroundings. Find yourself again. I'm not lost, Charlie. If you don't take a rest, I'm afraid you're going to be in trouble. With whom? Women? They're fine trouble. With yourself. You're working yourself up into a full-size nervous breakdown. Oh, rot. Oh, get away and come back rested, serene, clear-eyed. Let me take your photograph, will you? Uh, stand right next to the horse. Uh, here, like this. That's right. I'd like to talk to you. Why don't you let me take your picture? Look, I'm a professional photographer. You've got features I've never seen on another woman. I haven't offended you, have I? All I want is a photograph. Don't be afraid of me. Nice work. This 
is art, not photography. All I do is press the button. You're using the camera like a, like an artist of brush. Look at this old man and the horse. Two old pals having worked together all their lives, yeah, now yeah, grown yeah, old again. Yeah. What's the matter with you, Don? You never used to drink before six. Don't tell me what I should do and what I shouldn't do. I thought you'd come back rested, less nervous. What's bothering you, Don? You and everybody else. Hmm? Look, Charlie, if you're going to take my worries, you only take 10%, huh? Now, be a good boy and go off and leave me. I'm tired. <laughs> At three in the afternoon? Yeah, do I have to stick to convention about being tired? Oh, I don't want to bother you, Don. I only came by to tell you that World Magazine wants to do a spread about you, 16 pages. The work of the most famous photographer of our time, Don Powell. What are you doing, Charlie? In your absence, I even picked out the pictures. I got the Wagner galleries for the exhibition. What's the matter, Charlie? Don't you make enough money off of me? But Don... You tell me to rest, then let me rest. But Don... Look, I don't want all this publicity. I don't want to be plastered on gallery walls. I don't want to be published in millions of magazines. You're still sick. Okay, I'm sick. Now go! I hope you feel better tomorrow. If you do, come around to the Wagner galleries. Gerard of the World wants to meet you. He's going to pick out the pictures for the magazine. Mr. Powell, congratulations. Your work is fabulous. Well, you take a few hundred thousand photographs, a few are bound to turn out. I could take a million, and I'd never have your quality. The lights fusing on the shadows, the symbolism. We've chosen 24 for the world. We'll also give you a color spread, though your fort is black and white. This is my favorite. Beautiful composition. You can almost touch the snow. And still it has something unreal about it. How did that picture get here? Oh, it's not so bad, Don. How did it get here? The best of the collection, I'd say. It shows the eyes of a master who can pick the right object at the exact right light. It shouldn't be here. Please, Don. He's never satisfied with his work, is he? Did you hang that picture here, Charlie? I found it in the dark room. I thought you forgot to give it to me. It'll make the cover of the magazine. No. What's the matter, Mr. Powell? I, uh, I don't like this print. Looks perfect. No, no, I'll see that you get another one. This is just a proof. Oh, no. You leave that with me. No. I know. I thought you might be lonely. 
Oh, you must have a girl up here. Anyhow, I want to be sure which is which and what's what. Aren't you glad I came? I was at the exhibition. It was terrific. But you know what I like best? The pictures you took of me. But you didn't exhibit the right ones. Where are they? No! Why not? You took pictures of me, much better ones than you showed at the gallery. I, I have a good figure. You said so yourself. Where are they? Oh, no, Dixie, please. Why are you suddenly so shy? Those are my pictures, too. Now give them to me. No! Sometimes you frighten me. There's something in you that really scares me. I didn't mean to. I better go. Dixie. Please stay. Please don't leave me alone. You certainly have changed. How? In what way? I don't know. But it isn't you anymore. But who is it? Since you came back from your vacation. Something must have happened to you, Don. What is it? No, nothing. Have you met another girl? Why? Why do you say that? I... I never saw you so... How? Say it, how? You look... frightened. What's frightening you, Don? Nothing. What a silly question. Touch me. Why? Why not? So I walked out on the exhibition and Gerard's unhappy. I couldn't care less. No, he's not getting a photo. That's what I want to talk to you about. Charlie, where can I meet you? Anywhere you say, anywhere but here. No, I'm... No, I'm alone. Charlie, shut up and listen to me. Charlie, I'll meet you... Uh, at, at, at the 59 bar. Okay, and I want you there, Charlie. You got it? The 59 bar. as I could. Look, Charlie, I want to ask you something. Yes? Uh, the same. Thank you, sir. What is it? Charlie, do you think I'm insane? No, of course not. How long have you known me? Fifteen years? Have I changed lately? Oh, you're more nervous, but everybody Come has on, their Charlie, bad time. Give me a direct answer, yes or no? Well, since you asked me, yes, you have changed. That's what Dixie said. She left me just now. Yes, she phoned me. She did, huh? Charlie. Charlie, it's incredible. It can't be. What? Can a photograph be alive? What do you mean, alive? Look, I took a picture of that old farmhouse. Mm. There's nobody in the picture. You saw it. Was there anybody in it? No, there wasn't. It was just a photo of the old farmhouse with a cat leading down. Well, look, somebody has come out of that house. And they're coming toward me, closer and closer. What am I going to do? Huh? 
Well, I think you better talk to somebody who can give you an answer. I'm not the right guy, Don. No, I won't do that. I know when I'm seeing things. Look, this whole thing is nothing but a hallucination. No. Look, I'll go with you to the studio and prove to you that you're only seeing things. Why not? This would prove to you that you're only imagining the thing. No. Look, if I can't see her, you'll believe me. I know you will. Don, be reasonable. No. Let me come with you. No. Sorry, I'm going with you. No, you're not. Don. <laughs> has stopped. What happened? Mr. Powell's imagination got the better of him. I believe you'd called a heart attack. He'll be here shortly. It's a terrible thing, the way you go around ruining people's lives. Oh, but my dear, I thought you knew. People ruin their own lives. All we do is help them a bit. I've delivered your gift of murder. Now, when do I stand before this tribunal? Well, you have another gift to deliver. Remember, I said we had rules. You mean I have to go back again up there? Oh, no. I took my life because I couldn't stand it up there anymore. Besides, my sin is no greater than theirs. Why should I be singled out like this? Yes, I accepted your offer. I was afraid of, of what might be down there. But now I prefer that to helping you with your dirty work. Well, I was only trying to do you a favor, my dear. Tanya, deliver this pick to a miner in Torsholm Sweet. What he finds with this pick will lead to all sorts of complications, and we'll have a new recruit. <laughs> like we hit the glacier. That's the end of the shaft. We can't blast it out. It might reach miles into the mountain. Shall we abandon the tunnel? I don't see what else we can do. I'd better phone the office. Hey, Knut. What is it? There. There's something there. 
Let's blast it out. No, I'd better phone the scientists. Let them have a look at it. You know what it looks like? Don't say it. I think I'm seeing the same thing. writing the report? Yes, we'll need it for the Anthropological Congress in September. Just in case we lose the object. But how can we lose it? being 50,000 years old. I want to get the block of ice transported to the museum intact. It hasn't suffered from the transport. We'll know in a minute. See anything? Yes. Let me have a look. Remarkable. This I have to see to go in ice. I think that she died thousands of years ago. She looks alive. How beautiful she is. How do we get her out? Melt the ice? I would suggest chiseling her out, and the cold would preserve her. No. Ben, what is it? You must not take a risk and harm her. Of course not. I'll be taking care of her and see that the temperature is kept at 20 below. I'll be in charge. Why you? I'm the anthropologist here. And you know that my research pertains to any kind of petrified historic man? As the anthropologist at this museum, she belongs to my department. I don't want to be cheated out of an important research like this. Cheated? Gentlemen, please, let me decide who will be in charge. My, my training, my experiences. It's my duty to science. No, Sven, Dr. Olsen is right. She belongs to the science of anthropology. He is an expert on the subject. I think we should have a surgeon brought in to dissect her. Dissect her? I don't understand your attitude. How do you plan to go about getting her out, Dr. Olson? I think I'll increase the temperature in this room. The ice will slowly melt and become transparent. And uh, then we can study her better. But, but everybody will see her in her nakedness. Why not? Why shouldn't we see her in her nakedness. What is time but a conception of man? 
I have to get you out of your prison to hold you in my arms. I love you, Angelica. Seastrom! What are you doing here? The same as you. Did Dr. Ho make clear to you that this is my research, not yours? I know that you want to cheat me out of the fruits of my lifelong work. You are all right. I have the same right to be here as you, Olson. I understand your feeling. Your scientific curiosity. All right. I'll forget that we met here. If you promise not to come here again. She is mine. Of course. Of course. Now, now let's let's go out together. Eh? Leave the lady alone. What do you have in mind? What are you going to do to her? You'll make her suffer. You talk as if she were alive. But don't you see? No, of course you don't see. She is alive. That's not possible. By gradually lowering the temperature, a body can slowly be frozen without terminating life. How long can the body stay in a suspended state? One year, a century, a millennium? Who says it cannot? I know she's alive. Yeah. She looks alive. Shall we go? Well, I know what you have in mind. You want to get me out of here. You want to make it impossible for me to see her. That's not true. Then prove it. Turn this research, as you call it, over to me. She's more to me than she is to you. She's not an object of vivisection. That's enough. Now let's get out of here. Dr. Olson did not show up this morning. I phoned his home, but he didn't sleep there last night. Well, what about the girl in the ice? Well, that's why I called you. We must keep the find a secret until the day when we have gathered enough scientific information about this body. Otherwise, I'm afraid we'll be overrun with reporters and zealous anthropologists. Oh, I agree with you, Dr. Holt. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Dr. Seastrom, I want you to find out how we can free her from her icy surroundings without damage to her body. Yes, sir. Then I will be in charge. Yes. But under one condition. Yes. Since I will be responsible, I also need the authority that goes with a job like this. Oh, I understand. I want everybody checking with me first. No one is allowed entrance to the room without first having it cleared through me. That sounds reasonable. No one. Not even you. Why are you restricting me, too? Only for a short time. It would give me peace of mind. All right. <laughs> And that was the last time you saw Dr. Olson? Yes, I'm sure of it. You said you couldn't detect anything extraordinary in his behavior, no sign that he would upset. No, I didn't. Did you, Dr. Lund? Well, we were all somewhat excited, I would say, and we still are. This has nothing to do with Olson's disappearance, I assure you. 
Please, let me be the judge of that. We brought in an anthropolithic object. I put Olsen in charge of it. That excited him, I assume. Now, where is that object? In the ice house. Well, then Dr. Olsen might be there. No, Dr. Seastrom, who's working there, did not see him. Dr. Seastrom? Who is he? I put him in charge of the anthropolithic object after Olsen's disappearance. Now we're getting closer. It is pretty, isn't it? I want you to wear it. Here are the shoes. I know they'll fit you. Only a few feet of ice are separating us, Angelica. A few inches of frozen water. But you can see me. Can you hear me talk? to hold you in my arms. I'm going to get you out. Now, soon you will be free. How many thousands of years were you waiting for this day, Angelica? And yet you would have waited another 10,000 years for me, wouldn't you? I might have lived in your time, might have died young, before our love was fulfilled. If I had only the memory of this time, I would have known that I vowed to meet you again on this earth. When I first saw you, I recognized you instantly. Your name came back to me. I remembered your tender embraces, your soft lips. And now you've come back to me.
never go through that again. I can't believe the things I've seen. Taking my life was nothing compared to the sins your little gift led to. Now, now, my dear. Let's change the subject. While you were away, I was thinking. I think I came up with a diabolical idea. Is there any other kind of idea in a place like this? <laughs> hey, that's a fun. Well, I'm not much for fun, but that's a good one. You know, my plan may be sort of a pun, too. Yeah, you suffered all your life for love. You snuffed it out for love. You were hurt and angry. Why did you go through it again? I know what I did, and I know why. Well, how would I take it even? How would you like to wrap up all your frustrations in one little bundle? <laughs> I thought that would tickle your curious bone. <laughs> Some people say they can see things in a crystal ball. Others that they can foretell the future. Others say they can reconstruct the past. But they can only see what we down here let them see. Because the crystal ball is the toy of the devil. <laughs> Sakanya, you deliver this crystal ball to a Madame Germain in the Limehouse district of London. I realize there's no sense in protesting. But so far, I uh, don't see your diabolical plan. Well, my plan is to reward you for your effort. Reward? What do you mean? Well, let me explain. You love this John Radiant very much. John? Why do you bring him into this? Isn't that exactly what you want to do? Bring him into this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> then you could accomplish something. Times I, times I wanted to kill him. But you know, you're right. I would accomplish something. I could get even with him. I could get even for all the suffering, for all the humiliation. I could teach him a lesson. I could teach him one final lesson. <laughs> I thought you'd like my little plan. Now you just deliver this. And I can assure you, that your John Radian will join us very soon. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to. And what happens next? Nothing. It just stops. I've never found out what's in that room. It keeps pulling me, but I, I've never been able to make myself go inside. How often have you had this dream? Oh, six, maybe seven times. This is quite common, John. You have a fear of the future. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? At the same time, you want to know what you're going to do. So 
so you have this dream in order to give yourself an opportunity to find out. You get closer and closer and until you're too close. And at the last minute, you're afraid to face it. Tell me, is that why I scream? Just a device to bring you back to wakeful and safe reality. It would be awful to learn one's future. I'm certain I don't want to know any of it. A part of you does, or you wouldn't have the dream. You want it, yet you fear it. That fear is centered on a non-existent building in an imaginary street. But that's just the point. It isn't imaginary. I played there many times when I was a boy. Could you find it if you looked? Without a bit of trouble. Then do the thing that you're incapable of doing in your dream. Look at it for what it is. A harmless old building that probably frightened you as a child. Once you see that, I'm sure you'll be relieved of the anxieties that are plaguing you. John Radian. I expected you sooner. How did you know my name? The crystal, of course. Shall we begin? Begin? Your future. Isn't that why you came? Yes. That's always the way with you impatient ones. I'm not impatient. It's, it's just that I... I know. Why do people want to know about their future? To hear about pleasant surprises? Will they also accept the clouds of misfortune? The fears of disaster? Just tell me what you see. You'll get paid for it. Relax and come along with me. That's it. Much clearer. Much clearer there. Yes. Yes, I see you. But you're still far away. You will be offered a trip. A trip? To Egypt. I assure you, I'm not going anywhere. I have neither the money nor the inclination. There you are. Looking. Looking desperately for somebody. You 
can't find him. It frightens you. It terrifies you. Looking for whom? I don't know. He isn't there. But somebody else. You're talking to him. He has a scar. A deep scar. And he will prompt you to fulfill your destiny. I don't understand a word of what you're saying. It is as I expected. Fine, and tell me, what do I expect? Your future. But you have no future. Well, what did you see? A clock. Striking midnight. I saw you very clearly. I saw you very dead. You lie. Yes. I lie. Often. But the crystal never lies. Tonight at midnight, you will be dead. What is this? Are you threatening me? I have no grudge against you. I don't even know you. That's too bad. You know, I thought I might find out who or what it is I'm dealing with. Why do you want to know? Somewhere, somebody is waiting to kill me. Maybe the man with the scar. No. But somehow his presence is necessary to the chain of events. Then who is it? What would you do if you knew? Ah, there are many ways of dealing with a murder. I could, I could find his motives and reason with him. That would not change fate. Who is it? I am the one who will take your life. What do I owe you? Nothing. Just how do you intend to kill me? I have no idea. But is there a reason? I don't even know you. Well, this is a big town. Try to find me before midnight. Is there a telephone around? You just passed one. Oh, there's a girl in there. She's on a marathon talk. How long can a woman gab without saying anything? That's why I never married. Buy a ticket. Might be your night. Have a look. Might be a winner. A plane ticket to Egypt. Aren't you lucky? For days I thought I was only selling dots. Yes. Let away. That's what she said. Egypt. Said. Who? telephone. Try to find him for me, will you please? I want him now. He's my doctor now. Do you understand? Get him. Look, I'll leave my number. It's Hendon 3535. Call me. I'll be waiting. Hendon 3535. Have you got that? I suppose this will sound a little foolish to you, but would you please arrest me? You've uh, had a few, huh? No. 
look, just overnight. Take me in for overnight, that's all I ask, please. Now you, you go home and sleep it off. <laughs> no! She is going to kill me, she told me so! Well, I think that's very sporting of her to give you a fair warning. Oh, officer, this is no time for jokes. Don't you realize I may be dead before morning? Listen, mister, we're all liable to be dead before the night's out. Now, just get through there. Look, uh, I know this sounds ridiculous to you. But I had this dream, see? And, and my doctor, my doctor, he said, face it. He said, nothing is as bad as it seems if we face it. advantage, didn't you? The moment I'm out of your sight, I'm a sitting duck. I hope that you wouldn't come back. But you see, neither of us can escape it. Well, if I spend every moment with you, there's nothing you can do that I won't know about. If you don't sit down, you'll wear out the carpet. That wouldn't take very much. I walk in here and I find you in this room, sealed off from the world. There is no window in this room. What is this, a tomb? Enlightenment comes more easily in the dark. And what about you? You obviously believe that you're going to kill me. Don't you care enough about yourself to try to prevent it? If I had it in my power, I would. But there is nothing I can do, except... Except what? The kettle. I was preparing tea when you arrived. Operator, get me Westlake 4100. Yes, quickly, please. Hello, hello, did you get Dr. Humes for me? Yes, this is John Radian. Well, connect me quickly, please. Oh, oh, I'm glad you're home. I'm at 20 South Central Street. Yes. Yes, I followed your advice. I did. I met her. The fortune teller. I'm with her now. I'll be here till midnight. Sure she exists, just like in the dream. I want you to know. If anything happens to me, it was the fortune teller. Madame Germain, Germain, got that? Yes. Yes. Goodbye. Join me in a cup of tea. I just made that telephone call. Now, not to the police. They're no good to me to my doctor. You heard what I said? Sugar? Milk? Now, if anything happens to me, the police will know where I've been. There is nothing we can do to prevent your death. This tea, it smells funny. You think I'm trying to poison you? I don't know. But you don't believe in the crystal? Of course I don't! Then drink your tea.
Did it ever occur to you that you might die first? What do you suggest? Shall I kill myself? I swear your time is as short as mine. Let me buy, Mr. Radian. Don't tempt me. Let me buy. What are you doing? Nothing. You've got a gun. you put it out. How can you go on like this if you're convinced something's going to happen? We're all going to die. It's just that most of us don't know when. So we go on, day after day. Tell you what, I'm sorry for what I said before. All right? That's understandable. For one was five minutes to live. Don't say that. I'm sorry. We both have reason to be. You were saying, madam? We both have reason to be nervous. The prediction's on the other foot now, isn't it? I want you to leave here, now. Why? Look, you're free. Free to get away from me. You mustn't commit this crime. Shame, but it was his own fault. That's not what he told me. It was a stupid thing to be wandering around in that building. He was looking for something, something he'd lost. Guess that's why he didn't see the sign. Sign? Where's the other body? There was only one. Oh no, when he called me, he told me that she was responsible. Who? The fortune teller, the one that lived here. Fortune teller? They're in here. I told you this building is condemned. It's been empty for years. Ah, ah Satanya, you've done well. Now you can realize that coming into the unknown was not in vain. The lovers are reunited. Look, I don't know who you are or what this place is, but let's get one thing straight. I'm not in love with her, and I haven't been for a long time. You can't blame me for what she did. Anybody that cut their wrists and say it was for love. Uh-uh, I don't want any part of it. You haven't changed. You'll never change. You're just as rotten as the day what I met you. What have you got to do with all this? I thought we said our goodbyes a long time ago. You never give up, do you? You know, I told you again and again, you better see a doctor. You're sick. Stop it! I told you never to say that to me again. I don't have to stand here and listen to you. Wait. It's too late for that. 
We have no interest in your petty arguments down here. Mr. Radian, you were brought here for a purpose. Perhaps I should say a twofold purpose. Hers and mine. Look, mister. I don't know why she brought me here or what you're talking about. But I'm not planning to stay very long, so you better get to the point before I walk out of here. <laughs> the same old John. Only this is one conversation you can't walk out on. In fact, there's only one way out of here. Who's there? Now, hold on, my dear. You may be right in a way, but let me continue. Go ahead, but I have much time. <laughs> That's where you're wrong, Mr. Radian. Why? The only thing you have left is time. What? This is... This is... And those people are... <laughs> you became aware quicker than most. But as I said, twofold. Satanya's was for vengeance, which we condone. Ours for selfishness. <laughs> Which is part of our code. Please, please send him through there. He doesn't deserve an explanation. Oh, no, no. Our plan is only half completed. I need you both. But you said the tribunal would pass judgment. I fulfill all my assignments. I don't understand why I should even be here. You wanted to be here. You bought your ticket one way. But because of your determination, we've shown compassion. We've selected both of you to help us annex Earth as part of our domain. Can't you get to the point? Well, you never were one to understand the meaning of patience, were you, John? Now let him continue and we can get this thing over with. It's all very simple. I needed two lovebirds that it turned into fighting cocks. That's why we had to bring you down here. Look, why all the games? Can't you just get on with it? What do you want us to do? <laughs> He is impulsive, isn't he? That's why we chose him for the job. Well, here. I have an envelope that I want you both to deliver to her. You always told me before what I was delivering. What's in this envelope? It's our greatest achievement. It assures us of more territory. Space. We've been overcrowded here for years. That envelope contains a formula. A formula? What is it? What do we do with it? Deliver it to them. <laughs> They'll know what to do with it. <laughs> They'll play hell with it. <laughs> if that formula is a 500 megaton bomb. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.